Welcome to HiFinder Tech Talks. My name is Steven, and today I'm particularly pleased that we'll be explaining something which I, at least initially, never understood, and that is the whole world of Catalyst support materials. I have someone today who literally went out of chemicals or chemistry school to found a company and is making great strides within the hydrogen economy with this, producing catalysts and even more stuff. So I'm very pleased to welcome Arlene Ai from Momentum Materials all the way in Calgary in Canada. Welcome, Arlene. Hi, Steve. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So, Arlene, let's go straight to the point. And I want to ask you, catalyst support material? Okay, so what is a catalyst? Yeah, so a catalyst is the material that's used to accelerate chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. So in hydrogen fuel cells, hydrogen and oxygen happen, uh, the actual chemical reactions of hydrogen and oxygen happens in order to generate electricity. And catalyst is used to accelerate the electrochemical reaction rates in order to generate high enough electricity. Okay, and where is the catalyst located in the actual fuel cell? Yeah, so from this slide, you can say um, this graph shows a single fuel cell. And I'm only talking about a proton exchange membrane fuel cell. So in a single fuel cell, it has a bipolar plate, and within it is a membrane electroassembly. And the membrane electroassembly is also composed of multiple layers. And the catalyst layer is composed of catalyst and a support material. Okay, so a catalyst essentially is something that you know, makes the reaction faster or better, uh, as far as I understand, or even enables the, the reaction. And then um, I got that far, but now a support material. Now, what is a support material for a catalyst, which itself is supporting the reaction? Yeah, so the support material is a material that provides stability and large enough surface area for the catalyst materials to, to anchor. So the support material also provide pathways for proton and uh, reactant gases to transport. Um, so platinum is the mostly or widely used or most popular catalyst in the pan fuel cell world because of its yeah. good performance, but expensive. So in order to reduce the usage of platinum in the pan fuel cell, in order to reduce the cost, people introduce the support materials in order to increase the utilization of platinum and also increase the electrochemical surface area of platinum. And that's how carbon support materials is introduced. Okay, so, so ju just to understand, is the support material there to just, let's say, physically hold the catalyst into the reactant? You know, like hold it in such a way that it's as exposed as possible? Is that the work of the support material or does the support material do anything else with the catalyst? Yeah, it's mainly providing a support it's like a carrier. It does not involve in the electrochemical reactions that generate electricity. Okay, so it's not involved in, in the action. Okay, and, and you say carbon is normally used as the support material for, for a catalyst, which could be platinum. So, okay, so uh, is it really true that nothing happens to the support material during the reaction? It's, I mean, it, it, I think it doesn't it all heat up and so on, and doesn't it wear and tear over time? Yeah, that's a great question. So even though we hope the support material, and we also hope the platinum to um, to be not consumed or not changed during the reactions, mm -hmm. side reactions did happen during the operation. So this slide shows some of the typical um, degradation reactions that's happening during the operation of the system. So platinum as a catalyst could be degraded because of the detachment from the support material or dissolution in the atomers. It could also lose its electrochemical surface area due to all sort of ripening or agglomeration. And carbon material, even though it's quite stable, it still will be um, experiencing corrosion reactions um, during the operation. And the corrosion, carbon corrosion reactions is prominent, especially during the startup and the shutdown of the systems. And it will lead to or results to further detachment of the platinum nanoparticles because of the weakened carbon platinum bond. Okay, so that means that the 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 catalyst, uh, or let me say, the, the support material does face some kind of wear and tear. And does the the catalyst also face this? Am I getting this correctly? So both, okay, okay, and 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 what? So they. 
they dissolve in the material or they, they break up or um, what, what is the exact physical thing that happens with them? Yeah, so when the platinum nanoparticles is detached from the support materials, it mainly lost its activity because it's oh, not yeah. electrically com uh, connect with the whole fuel cell. And when it's agglomerated, it lost its surface area, which means it's also losing its activity. Okay, so that means when it's detached or, or, or clogged. Or so. Okay, so now the obvious question, I think, is what can one do to alleviate these effects or even to prevent this from, from happening? Yeah, so a lot of approaches have been um, tried or applied in order to mitigate um, the degradation within the catalyst layer, um, either from the system level or from the materials level. Um, at momentum materials, we are trying to solve those challenges from the material level. Um, okay. That's why we're developing a nanoporous carbon material as a support material in order to mitigate um, the degradation mechanisms that's happening. Okay, so, so you have this, this kind of new structure, which you call nanoporous, that, that is essentially there to hold the catalyst. Is it still the same catalyst which you would use in other situations, or is it a different catalyst, catalyst now? Yeah, um, at current stage, we are still using platinum as a catalyst. Okay, but essentially what you're providing is a new kind of support for this, and, and, and that's this structure. Can you explain a little bit what, what we see here? I see you, you brought a picture of exactly that. What, what, what is the structure and how does it work now? Yeah, um, so this image shows a model uh, of the morphology of our nanoporous carbon material. So as you can see here, our carbon materials has a three-dimensionally interconnected pore structure. It looks like a honeycomb as compared to the conventional product, which is in the image here. Um, in a conventional product, uh, people use a solid spherical um, carbon materials as the catalyst support, where the catalyst is mainly anchored on the outer surface of the carbon materials. So it's not well protected. It could be prone to like a lot of degradation. And in the new structure, our nanopore structure, we load the platinum nanoparticles within the pores. So the pores kind of confine and protect the platinum nanoparticles, and that will largely extend the activity and lifetime of the catalyst. Okay, okay. Now this is interesting because this is, the, I mean, I, I know with the chemistry it sometimes goes really up, but like, like this I can say it's, it's understandable because you, you're creating, you know, this, this new support structure. But when I see this, I, I ask myself two things. So firstly, uh, Arlene, if you have now a grid instead of, let's say, an exposed area, isn't that on a chance that you know, let me say impurities or so can get hooked in this grid as well, or, or is that not a problem? Yeah, um, it's currently not a problem. So the pore size of our carbon materials, we are able to tune it uh, between 10 nanometers to 100 nanometers. So yeah. far, we don't observe um, mass transport um, issues. And actually, this kind of organized structure uh, also could facilitate the mass transport within the catalyst layer and help to increase the utilization of the platinum nanoparticles. Okay, and, and how on earth does one get the catalyst into such a structure? Yeah, so there are like different uh, manufacturing or platinum loading approaches that could help to load platinum within the pore structure. Um, yeah, so it's not a problem. We are able to load nanoparticles within the pores. Okay, so that's, I guess, what, what, what you guys do, <laughs> mainly in that lab where, where you're sitting at. Okay, um, it, can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? I mean, uh, I know that you have quite some stuff that you've already done around this. Um, yes. Yeah, so here um, shows the actual morphology of our nanoporous carbon materials. As you can see here, those images are um, collected by SEM um, scanning electron microscope. Yes. So we are currently able to make the nanoporous carbon powders with different pore sizes ranging from 10 nanometers up to 100 nanometers, as you can see here. And you see that we really are able to control the pore size and make a really organized Force structure. Um, okay, so, so all four images are from your 
carrier, uh, catalyst carrier material. Is this correct or not? Um, so the last one is a comparison. It's the com conventional product. Okay, understood, understood. Okay, so you, you have a different, okay, understood. Yeah, looks, so you can tell the mm -hmm. difference because the non-porous carbon um, powders has a mono-dispersed porous structure, while the conventional product um, is kind of like an inorganized um, structure with solid uh, spherical carbons agglomerated together. Okay, understood. I mean, so makes sense that if you have, you know, this, this, this more structured way, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, honeycomb for me is also something that sounds like uh, kind of efficient and nice way to do things because uh, bees <laughs> do that. And uh, that has been years and years of evolution that has op optimized that. Now, this would probably bring in some new metrics into the whole system as well. Can you give us some, some figures? What are the effects that we could see around that if you use this new structure now? Yeah, so our primary goal is to extend the lifetime of the catalyst layer. So lifetime durability is some of the major metrics uh, that we measure uh, during our own product development. As you yes. can see in this slide, we did measure electrochemical uh, surface area of the catalyst. We measure its retention after like a few um, thousands or like tens of thousands of cycles of durability testing. Yes. Yes. Um, collect the results that we're using DOE's accelerated um, stress testing to measure the callus durability of our callus compared to the conventional callus. And we tell that we, we can see from the results that our callus support can extend the lifetime to more than doubled as compared to the co conventional callus support. So just by physically changing the, the, the support material, you can like that extend the lifetime of a stack. Yeah, exactly. And also by physically changing the um, the support material, we're also able to increase the utilization of the catalyst. Um, as we can see from the mass activity of our product versus the conventional product, the mass activity of platinum is also improved due to the organized structure. Okay, so you're saying you can use less catalyst and you can use the stack for a longer time. Exactly, yeah. Okay, very bold statement, I must say, uh, but good on you. I mean, honestly, I think uh, some of these things are what the hydrogen economy needs to move forward, you know, to, so that we get to the actual solution, uh, you know, of, of the renewable energy that, uh, that the whole planet needs. So, okay, so are, are you... Are you Seeing, I mean, okay, when, when you look at this um, in an entire system, I know that the stack is one of the bigger, more expensive components. Do you, when, you, when you look at the typical cost distribution, how does this factor in? And I mean, if you tell me that you're going to prolong the lifetime of a stack and reduce the input of a catalyst, but your system is so expensive that the prices go up, then I will tell you, okay, that, that's, that's probably not going to be an easy sell, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, um, so if we look at the cost of breakdown um, of a fuel cell system, we can always tell that the stack um, is the major contributor to the whole system cost, and yeah. the cash layer is the major cost contributor to a stack. Um, so for introducing like new materials, um, either a catalyst material or a new um, catalyst support material, the initial capital cost could be um, a little bit higher as compared to the conventional products. However, when we look at the long-term operation, especially mm -hmm. for the heavy duty and long distance transportation applications, people yeah. care more about the operational cost because um, that's more prominent in the long term. So. By introducing a, a better catalyst or a durable, a much durable catalyst support materials, you are going to save a lot in the operational cost. So in the long term, the overall cost will be reduced as well for the end users. Okay. And and tell me, I are people using this now? Are you already having this in some of the let's say applications, be they some of the, the fuel cell systems or even, you know, we see some of the vehicle manufacturers already uh, putting out products as well. Are, are, you, are you already having this there 
or is this something that is still being developed? Yeah, so currently we already have our um, Kali support materials being able to manufacture it in our mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing in our factory. Uh, so currently we have customers globally uh, for North America, South Korea, Japan, and Germany trying our materials. And one major automaker um, producer is um, going through a larger scale testing using our Kali support in their own system at this moment. We haven't published it yet because all the initial testing or validation by the initial customers are under NDAs. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, understood, understood. Wow, okay, <laughs> that is uh, clear that now uh, we, we, we can't be talking about that now, but hopefully sometime soon uh, then we can see more. I mean, overall, it's always great to, to see when innovation pushes the whole thing forward. Can you give us a little bit of an outlook how you see these things developing even future? I mean, uh, do, you, do you have even more ideas how you can tweak this so that to increase the efficiency even more? Yeah. Um, so in the future, um, our goal will still be focusing on um, introducing more organization, more ordered structure into the pen fuel cell uh, mm -hmm. using our materials. So we want to build what is called order structured memory ledger assembly by making the catalyst layer more controllable. So all the structure, um, as we just mentioned, it not only increased the platinum utilization, in the long term, it could largely reduce the uh, usage of platinum in the pen fuel cell. It could also extend the lifetime of the catalyst layer, which will extend the lifetime of the whole stack. And also, all the structure will increase the, um, the controllability and uh, reproducibility in the manufacturing pr procedures. And in the long term, the controllability and reproducibility in the manufacturing processes will also help to decrease the capital cost when manufacturing the order structured memory ledger assembly. So that's our main goal. We want to build order structured memory ledger assembly mm -hmm. using our materials. And I, I see you have a picture there. So order structure means the, the, the catalyst layer, you want that to be more ordered. Is, is that what you mean by order structure? Okay, okay. Exactly, and, yeah. And with that, Okay, so, so we're talking about the dark shaded part there, but the GDL, uh, more that, that catalyst layer, you'll have that order. Okay, yes, yeah. the one you're pointing out now. Okay, wow. <laughs> Arlene, I must say, you're on a mission to put some order in that structure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's our thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love that. Okay, so I, honestly, thank you so much for explaining to us what catalyst support materials are and what role they play. I think before this, I would never have got that. Um, we know what the catalyst is that helps accelerate, uh, accelerate the, the, the reaction and, and enable it. Uh, but now we know that the material that's actually holding it into the reaction space makes all the difference. Uh, and Arlene and Momentum materials are there to put some order in that space <laughs> and get the efficiency out there. Well, okay, cool. Thank you so much uh, for explaining that to us and thank you for taking the time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you all the way from, from Canada. Um, so thank you. And I hope that we can talk later at some point about you know, where this is being used and we can actually look at models and, 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 and yeah, this is gonna be a great effect. If you have enjoyed this video, please give us a like. If you like what Aline is doing, you can give her a like as well. You can actually find Aline and many other companies that do amazing things for the hydrogen economy in, uh, on highfinder.com. Uh, we have this YouTube channel also where you learn or you can learn stuff about catalyst support material or other things that are related to a stack. How does that work or uh, electrolyzers and all these things. So thanks very much for taking the time. Look around, maybe you can find some more stuff. Thank you, Arlene, uh, especially. And I wish you all a wonderful day further. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you, Steve. You have a team. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.